Welcome to Collector's Corner, where we take a deep dive into a particular Barker-related collectible that is either rare or has special meaning to us. Or it's just something cool that we wanted to make sure people know about. Uh, these videos will be Patreon exclusive. And this first one is based on an article I wrote in January 2015 called Clive Barker's Jump Tribe. For many reasons, there are some die-hard Clive Barker enthusiasts who may not have heard of the Jump Tribe. It's okay, they're not exactly horror fare. Think more like Aberat for a younger audience. They were announced in 2005 with a plush toy by Art Asylum. Plus there was a book with written and painted illustrations by Clive Barker. The first one anyone gets is Yabu. This is a Comic-Con exclusive from 2005 San Diego Comic-Con, and it's more of a prototype to get people excited about the Jump Tribe. It has the same book as the later commercially produced Yabu with Wings. Uh, the main difference between the plushie and the other commercially produced toys are, one, it has an opaque box with no viewing window. Uh, the plushie itself is not made from a fuzzy fleece. It's a smoother material, and it has much more of a homemade feel. Uh, lastly, it doesn't have wings. This is Yabu before he jumps through the Zeliquar or dimensional hole where he learns magic and gives himself wings. I even bought a second one of these for my son Joel uh, when he was born. As he's grown up, he's not been overly enthusiastic about it. Next, we have the other four. Yabu with Wings, Kunguna, Bilum, and Twath. With the exception of Yabu with Wings, all four have their own original box with paintings and stories by Clive Barker. Uh, Yabu with Wings has the same book as the 2005 Comic-Con exclusive Yabu. Uh, these four Jump Tribe are also bound inside boxes with windows and have colorful paintings of all the characters on the back of the box. I won't go into the stories of the Jump Tribe or the characters because there's the fun of collecting. If you want it spoiled, uh, I talk about it on our Rare Stories Part 3 episode of the podcast. So what happened to them? After the 2005 announcement and the Comic-Con exclusive Yabu, there was a delay and the commercially available toys were removed from Art Asylum's website. And these toys were not available anywhere. I tried to order them on Art Asylum's site and they were gone. Then after a Google search, I was only able to find them where they were available for pre-order at a store called Camelot Books. I ordered them and then got an apology email a few days later explaining that they would not be getting any in stock. In the 13th Revelatory Interview by Phil and Sarah Stokes on June 2nd and 3rd, 2006, while other fans I've come to know later, including Jose, were asking more profound and impressive questions, I asked what happened to the Jump Tribe. And this was Clive Barker's response. Clive said, I can't tell you about the Jump Tribe stuff right now because something's happening and I can't talk about it. But something exciting is happening. Then later, according to Wikipedia, at the 2006 Toy Fair in New York, Art Asylum announced revised street dates for the Jump Tribe, with the first wave planned for March 2006 and the second wave following in July. Unfortunately, the March release date did not materialize, nor did the dedicated Jump Tribe site, and Art Asylum have not as yet announced a rescheduled date. The company dissolved in 2007, and some assets, including Art Asylum name and the Minimates brand, were acquired by Diamond Select. The company maintains a New York City office, and many of Diamond Select's toy lines feature designs and sculptures would be work by former Art Asylum staffers. The Art Asylum logo appears on all the packaging and the Art Asylum site is now Diamond Select's official blog. Okay, now I just checked it uh, recently. Now, at the time that I wrote this, that was true. But I think when you go to artasylum.com, there's just nothing there. So now we'll talk a little bit about my history with these um, and how I got them. So after two years of saved eBay search notifications, I was able to find Kunguna available for auction. Competition was fierce, but I won the auction after spending about $260 on them. Actually, a funny story about that. The lady who was selling it on eBay said she bought it for her daughter, and her daughter was like, I don't know who these things are. What is this? And so she, for her, it was kind of like a fail. So she put it on there really cheap, but the bids pushed it way up beyond anything that she had any concept of. She had no idea that these were rare or something, you know, that people would really want so anyway the box was a little beat up but i was wondering if i had the only one in existence i was very pleased with myself 
And a couple of more years go by, and by 2010, I flew to a Clive Barker signing at Texas Frightmare Weekend. And while I was waiting in line to get a picture with Clive, I see this lady. Uh, later, I would see her again at conventions. Her name's Brandy. Uh, she's also gone by Sicko Films and Yama and Taka. Uh, with all of these Jump Tribe uh, out of their boxes and all squished to the outside of her backpack in this netting pockets. And I can't believe it. Uh, they were all there, and I had only seen pictures. Uh, Brandy told me of her struggle to get them from a Japanese store where they had made her name her price. Not in a good way, but it was more like, how much money do you have? So again, later in 2012, they show up in my search, finally. And not just one, but all four. Uh, individually and complete sets, uh, minus the Comic-Con exclusive Yabu, which ironically has been easy to find all along. And at a reasonable price. I couldn't believe my look. I bought all three that I was missing. And I bought a set for Mark Miller of Seraphim Films that was working for Clive Barker at the time uh, as a wedding present. Uh, and then uh, I told Brandy about it, that there's this seller in Ireland that must have a warehouse full of them. So like me, she was a little annoyed that they weren't so rare anymore because, well, quite frankly, we spent a lot of money on these things. She questioned whether they were knockoffs, and I can attest that they're real, and sometimes you can still see them popping up on eBay today. Happy collecting. If you like this Patreon-exclusive video, spread the word so we can get more people to watch this kind of stuff and help support our show. Thanks for listening.